Hi, welcome to today's session. In this video, we will learn to create configuration driven reusable data ingestion pipelines using AWS Glue. Let us look at sample use case in which creating a configuration driven data ingestion solution will be beneficial. In many real world scenarios, we used to receive more than one file from the source systems, and there will be basic transformations to be applied, like dropping some of the columns and filtering out some of the unwanted records, etc., before the data gets loaded into raw layer in S3. The straightforward method to load these individual files to raw layer is by creating the glue ETL job for each of the files. However, if you have more number of files to be processed, then it becomes an overhead to create those many jobs and maintenance of them will be difficult. To overcome these difficulties, we can create configuration driven reusable glue ETL job. Let us look at an approach of creating the reusable data ingestion pipeline. So, in this example, uh, we have two files, namely customers and sales, uh, coming from the source system. They are of CSV in nature, and there has to be some basic transformation to up to be applied on these files. Like you know, some of the columns needs to be dropped, and some records to be filtered out based on some business criteria, and it has to be loaded into a target in you know, a different parquet files. For this, what we can do is go ahead and create a single blue ETL job, which will accept a configuration files. Configuration file meaning here will contain a definition of uh, where is the source file residing and what is its format maybe, and then what type of transformations to be applied. For instance, we can talk about columns to be dropped and uh, what is the filter to be applied, and finally the target details where the filtered out and then you know plant data to be loaded in S3 as a 4K format. This is a very simple. Uh, you know, definition of the config file. Uh, this can be evolved uh, based on the real world requirements to include more and more conditions. So the config file is fed as an input to the glue ETL job. Uh, then the glue job reads the config file and understand where the source is residing and fetches the content into the data frame. Then it identifies what sort of transformations to be applied on top of the data frame and it goes ahead and applies those transformation and finally it gets the details where the data needs to be returned and you know go ahead and store the data in that format specified so this is the you know, kind of an approach we can follow to come up with a reusable data pipeline to load a similar sort of a file with varying transformations let us get into a quick demo to build the reusable data ingestion pipeline using AWS Glue. There are a couple of prerequisites for this demo. You need to have an S3 bucket and folders to store the source data output glue script on the config file. And then the IAM role, uh, which has access to the above S3 object. Before we move on with the glue ETL script, let's take a look at the configuration files. So here I have used YAML config file, uh, it, it's up to the developer, right? It could be YAML or it could be JSON, right? Uh, based on whichever work list. So here, if you look at, we have defined the data source details. It contains the source path and the source data set name. It's an S3 path and the CSV file name. And then we have the transformation detail. Um, here, there are two transformations we are planning to apply part of this ETL job. Dropping some of the columns, and then we are also filtering out some of the record. And then finally, we have information on where this resultant data from needs to be written. It target S3 path and then the name of the parquet file. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at the ETL script itself. ETL script accepts a parameter called job config file. This is the name of the config file. Uh, which will be used to process the input file, right? So where we have the definition of the source file and what transformations to be applied and where the results needs to be written, right? The file name to be given as an input. 
then once the file name is given as an input uh, it will go ahead and connect to the s3 bucket where this config file is available and it will fetch the content of the config file then it will pass the contents of the config file and assign the values into the variables like a source path source data set and so on and so forth as a next step it will go ahead and read the content of the source file based on the source path and the source data set it understood from the config file in the next step it does the drop column transformation. So it finds the drop columns from the config file. Uh, it will go ahead and use that parameter to drop those columns from the dynamic frame. The next step, it does the row level filtering uh, based on the configuration defined above. And the filtered data frame will be returned as a parquet file in the target path. And we have also specified the target file name. Now let us go ahead and create the glue etl job with this script okay i'm on aws glue console let's navigate to etl job click on spark script editor and then we have a script already available so let's go ahead and select upload and edit an existing script let me go ahead and choose And then let's hit create. Okay, our script is ready. We will go ahead and set up the job detail. Let me name it as source to raw. And IAM role is already available. I'll just go ahead and select it. Glue demo role. And then rest of the things I'll leave it default. The number of nodes or workers we can reduce it to two. We are, you know, just going to process very small amount of data. And then job timeout again can be five minutes. It won't take more than that. In advanced properties uh, script path, let me go ahead and change it. Yeah, I'll select the one which I already created. Spark UI, I'm disabling it. The temporary path as well, I'll go and select the one which I have created in the bucket. Okay, the next step we will have to add a parameter through which we will pass the config file name. Let's go ahead and hit add new parameter. Let's name our parameter. Job config file. This is going to be the name. Let's go ahead and give it as an input. Uh, on the first file, we want to process through the job as customers. Let's go ahead and put that as a parameter value. I think we are pretty much done. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's give a run. Okay, it started running. Probably it will take a minute or two to complete. I'll pass the video now and we'll resume once it's complete. Okay, uh, the job has been completed. Let us navigate to S3 and see the output. Okay, I'm on the S3 console. Let's navigate through our bucket and I'll navigate to output data folder within which we can see the customer parquet file, which means our job had read the input file from the input data directory. It had applied the transformations based on the config file, which we have stored in the config folder. And then output has been returned to the output data directory. So now let us go ahead and run the job for sales file. Navigate to the blue console, go to job details, and then under advanced properties, let's change the value of the parameter job config file. Sales, and then I'll save it. 
and then give a run. We'll resume once the job is complete. Okay, now the second run of the job also has been completed for the sale file. Let us navigate to the S3 folder and see whether we have the output created. Here we go. Sales parquet file has been created. Now let us go ahead and compare the input and output file to make sure the transformations have been applied the way we defined it in the config file. I have the source CSV file uh, open here. Uh, it contains a set of columns um, and the sales CSV is here again with a set of columns. To compare it, uh, let me go ahead and create the glue catalog for these portal files so that we will be able to run the queries in Athena. Let's navigate to glue console and go to colors and hit create color and let's name it as a demo. We'll leave rest of the thing default and click next. And is your data already mapped to glue table? Not it. My data source, and then I'll go ahead and browse, collect our bucket, and then select the output data folder and choose. And crawl all subfolders and add an S3 data source. Click next, then we'll go ahead and select our demo role. Click next. So we'll go ahead and create a database for this purpose. Click on add database and then name our database as let's say raw layer and then hit create database. Let's navigate to the uh, clue console. Refresh it. We should be able to see our database. Oh, yeah, raw layer and rest of the options are default and then click next. Create crawler. Crawler has been created successfully. We'll go ahead and run it now. Okay, it started running. Probably it will take a minute to complete. We'll resume on such step. Okay, the crawler run has been completed and it says two table has been changed. Uh, let us navigate to the Tina to query these tables. Athena query editor. Um, so database is raw layer here and then we can see those two files uh, what we just loaded using the glue jobs customers underscore parquet and sales underscore parquet. Let us go ahead and preview customers underscore parquet. Query has been over. Um, now let us compare this with the um, input CSV file. Okay, customer CSV. So we have customer ID, gender, age, annual income, and spending score. As per our config, uh, we want to drop the column spending score and uh, we want to select all of the records where age is greater than 21. Now let's go ahead and see the output in Athena. So we can see age is greater than 21. Also, the column what we wanted to drop, our uh, spending score has been dropped. So both the transformations which we configured part of our config file has been applied to this file and output is written. And similarly, let's take a look at the sales parquet file. Okay, which has got only four records. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the source data first for this. It has got five records here. And in the config, we said uh, we want to drop the column deal size and also we want to apply a filter where status equal to ship. Select the records only where status equal to ship. Right now, let's navigate to the CSV file. In the status, we can see four for four records that ship and one record has got delivered. And the deal size is towards end of the file. Okay, now let us look at the output. 
So we can see only four records with the status ship. Uh, one record with status delivered has been filtered as per our config file. And also we do not see the deal size column which we wanted to drop. So both the transformations have been successfully applied and the output has been created. Hope this has given you an idea of how to create a config driven ETL data pipelines using AWS Glue. Of course, this is more of a very straightforward scenario. In real world, you might have um, you know, more complex transformations to apply. Uh, and this method can be evolved uh, with such transformations so that it can be applied in the real world scenario. Hope this video was useful. Thank you all.